Hello, this is Mrs Scoble. Hi class. Um, this is me reading the next chapter, chapter two, of The Midnight Gang by David Walliams and illustrated by Tony Ross. Chapter two, here or there. A look of panic swept across the doctor's face. Oh, dear, he said. There are 192 questions on this form and we are still stuck on question one. I'm sorry, replied the boy. As he lay on the hospital trolley, a tear rolled down his cheek. He felt like such a failure, not even being able to remember his own name. Oh no, you're crying, said the doctor. Please don't cry. The hospital principal will come by and think that I've upset you. The boy did his best to stop. Dr Luppers searched his pockets for a tissue. Unable to locate one, he dabbed the boy's eyes with the form. Oh no, now the form's wet, he exclaimed. He then began blowing on the form to dry it. <laughs> this made the boy laugh. Oh good, said the man. You're smiling. Now look, I'm sure we can find out your name. Does it begin with an A? The boy was pretty sure that it didn't. I don't think so. B? The boy shook his head. C? He shook his head again. This could take some time, murmured the doctor under his breath. Tea, said the boy. You'd like a cup of tea? No, my name. It begins with a T. Dr Luppers smiled as he wrote the first letter on the top of the form. Let's see if I can guess. Tim, Ted, Terry, Theo, Taj. No, you don't look like a Taj. I've got it, Tina. All these suggestions firing at the boy clouded his mind, making it more difficult for him to remember. But finally, his own name came shining through. Tom! said Tom. Tom! exclaimed the doctor, as if he was a as, as if he was about to have guessed it. He wrote down the next two letters. So, what do they call you? Thomas, Tommy, Big Tom, Little Tom, Tom Thumb. Tom, said the replied the boy wearily. Tom had already said his name was Tom. Do you have a surname? It begins with a C, said the boy. Well, at least we have the first letter. It's like doing the crossword. Charper. Tom Charper, said the man scribbling down on the form. That's question one done. Just 191 to go. Now, who brought you to the hospital today? Are your mummy and daddy here? No, said Tom. He could be sure of that. His parents weren't here. They were never here. They were always there. For some years now, they had packed their only child off to a posh boarding school deep in the English countryside, St Willits Boarding School for Boys. Tom's father earned a lot of money working in desert countries far away, extracting oil from the ground, and his mother was very good at spending that money. Tom would only see them on school holidays, usually in a different country each time. Even though Tom had travelled alone for hours to see them, his father would often still have to work all day, and his mother would leave him with a nanny while she went shopping for more shoes and handbags. The boy would be lavished with presents upon arrival, a new train set, a model plane or a night suit of armour, but with nobody to play with, Tom would get bored quickly. All he really wanted was to spend time with mum and dad, but time was the one thing they never ever gave him. No, mother and father are abroad, answered Tom. I am not sure who brought me to the hospital today. It must have been a teacher. <gasps> Ooh, said Dr Luppers excitedly. Might it have been your games teacher? There was a man in the waiting area, dressed as a cricket umpire with a straw hat and a long white jacket, which I thought was unusual, as we tend not to have cricket matches in the waiting area. That must be my games teacher, Mr Carsey, yes. Dr Lupper's eyes flickered down to his form. form. They flashed with panic once again. Oh dear, it only says parent, guardian, friend or other on the form. What am I going to do? Tick other, instructed the boy, taking charge. Thank you, said the doctor, looking relieved. Thank you so, so much. What is the nature of your injury? A bump on the head. Of course, replied Dr Luppers as he scribbled that down on the form. Now, next question. Would you say the general appearance of Lord 
defunct hospital has been lower than your expectations, has met your expectations, has exceeded your expectations, or has greatly exceeded your expectations. What was the first one again? asked Tom. The pain in his head made it hard for him to think straight. Oh, that it's been lower than your expectations. What is? The general appearance of the hospital? I've only seen the ceiling so far, sighed the boy. And how would you rate the general appearance of the ceiling? Fine. I'll put that. It's met your expectations. Next question. Would you say that the care you have received today at the hospital has been poor, fine, good, very good, or in fact too good? It's been all right, said Tom. Hmm. Sorry, but all right isn't on the form. Good then? Not very good, said Dr Luppers, a hint of pleading in his voice. It would be nice to say I got a very good on my first week. Tom sighed. Put too good then. Oh, thank you, replied the doctor. His eyes were dancing with delight. Don't know how to do that, but I'll try. No one ever gets too good. Though I worry whether too good might actually be a bad thing. Can I just put very? Yes, put whatever you like. I'll put very good. Thank you very much. This will go down very well with the hospital principal, Sir Quentin Strillers. Now, next question. We're racing through them now. Would you recommend Lord Fant Hospital to family and friends with a heavy heart, half-heartedly, wholeheartedly, or very wholeheartedly? Suddenly, Nurse Meese bustled through the curtains. That isn't time for all your stupid questions, Doctor! The man put his hand up to his face as though, as though he thought he was going to be slapped. Don't hurt me! You silly boy, as if I would, replied the nurse before clouting him around the ear, hard with her thick, heavy hand. Oh! screamed Dr. Luppers. That hurt! Well, at least you're in the right place for an injury! <laughs> the woman laughed to herself and almost managed to smile. I need this station back right now. I have a news agent being rushed in here in an ambulance who managed to staple his own fingers together. Stupid man. Oh no, replied the doctor. I can't stand the sight of blood. Get this boy out of here before I'm back or I'll cut you down the other ear. And with that, Nurse Meese whipped back the curtain and stomped off down the corridor. Okay, began Dr. Luppers. Let me speed this up as much as I can. The man began speaking very fast. Bad swelling, keep you here for a few nights, just be safe. Hope you don't mind. Tom didn't mind staying at the hospital at all. Anything to miss time at his dreaded boarding school. It was one of the most expensive schools in the country, and so most of the boys who went there were exceedingly posh. Tom's parents were rich because of his father's well-paid job abroad. But the family were not posh at all. Lots of the boys looked down at their down their aristocratic noses at Tom. I'm just going to send you up to the children's ward right away. Nice and peaceful up there. You should get a good night's sleep. Porter! Tom froze in fear as the terrifying man limped back in. Yes, Dr. Lupper, sir. He slurred. Take, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. What was your name again? Tom, replied Tom. Take Tom up to the children's ward. End of chapter two. See you soon.